Good morning and welcome again to our series on the saints in the calendar of the Episcopal Church. Today we will be talking about Henry Melker of Muhlenberg, but first just a few prefacing remarks. It's interesting to think about how the denominations that came to the United States during the colonial period were so grouped originally by ethnicity. Nearly all the Scots were Presbyterian, uh, the English, as we know, were Anglicans, later Episcopalian. Uh, many of the Germans were Lutherans, and the Swedes were Lutherans, the Irish Roman Catholics, etc. And um, when you had one denomination of multiple ethnicities, the difficulty was to unite them all, especially when in those days they all spoke a different languages. And so their cultural barriers were as significant sometimes as the theological differences between them and other denominations. One man who um, performed the Herculean task of uniting, uh, especially the Lutheran churches, was, as I just mentioned, Henry Melchor Muhlenberg. He's regarded as the father of Lutheranism in North America. He was born in Hanover, Germany in 1711, received his education in Göttingen and Halle before immigrating to the American colonies in 1742. Lutherans came to the colonies from a variety of regional and ethnic backgrounds and tended to build churches wherever they settled, sometimes with Lutherans of different origins settling in close proximity to each other. There's an interesting aspect of that. Just in Charleston, St. Andrew's Lutheran Church is on Wentworth Street and it backs up to St. Johannes, the, the German church on Hazel Street. Uh, the two properties actually touch. There was little organization among these disparate groups until the arrival of Muhlenberg. Upon his arrival, Muhlenberg visited Lutherans in coastal South Carolina and Georgia before making his way to Philadelphia. And indeed, he is regarded as the founder of St. John's Lutheran Church on Archdale Street, downtown Charleston, which is one of my most favorite buildings in the Holy City. Muhlenberg began to call together the Lutherans, first the Germans, then the Swedes, until the formation of the first Lutheran Synod in America in 1748, the Ministerium of Pennsylvania. At the inaugural Synod, Muhlenberg offered a common liturgy for use among Lutherans, the liturgy was adopted and became the essential element in unifying the Lutherans in America for several generations. His axiom, one book, one church, has been a benchmark for liturgical revision among North American Lutherans to the present day. Just another quick aside, when Thomas Cramer was working on the first English language book of common prayer in 1549, he drew heavily on the work of Martin Luther. Several hundred years later, when Muhlenberg was looking for an English language uh, that would unify Lutherans in this new country, he used the translations from the Book of Common Prayer. So Episcopalians and Lutherans have had all sorts of reciprocal influences on each other. Muhlenberg also recognized the pastoral challenges of organizing a new church in the new world. In the old countries, the church was closely allied with the state. Taxes to support the churches were collected by the state and Christian education was a part of the curriculum in every school. But in the new world, the churches were to be voluntary, self-supporting associations and education in matters of Christian faith was to be the concern of the church and the home. Muhlenberg's family played prominent roles in the birth of the new nation. One of his sons served as a brigadier general in the revolution, while another was a member of the Continental Congress and later the first speaker of the House of Representatives. His great-grandson, William Augustus Muhlenberg, was a priest who shaped the Episcopal Church in the mid-19th century. Indeed, one of the things that happened is that the Swedish Lutherans were more similarly organ organized uh, in the way that Anglicans and Episcopalians were. And after the Revolutionary War, although many of the Swedes remained Lutheran, many more of them actually were assimilated into the Episcopal Church. And so that is how this great grandson came to be one of our priests. The senior, uh, Mr. Muhlenberg, died on this day, October the 7th, in the year 1787. I think we would all agree that his wonderful work in helping to organize um, German and Swedish Christians in this country was certainly phenomenal. And for that, we give thanks to God. 
Let us pray. Loving God, shepherd of your people, we thank you for the ministry of Henry Melchior Muhlenberg, who left his native land to care for the German and Scandinavian pioneers in North America. And we pray that following the teaching and example of his life, we may grow into the full stature of Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever.